So we are the sum of our parts, but we are also the sum of our past. This video was inspired by a, a video I watched the other day about uh, life being consistent with chapters in a book and that where one chapter ends, new chapters begin. And also by uh, Eric Erickson's theory of stages of psychosocial development. Eric Erickson identified eight different stages of development whereby each stage one either developed positively or negatively and in the positive they could move on to the next stage with great aspiration to succeed there and then follow on from there and there. But uh, in situations where the negative path was achieved it would leave a uh, psych psychosocial deficit in the child or teenager or adult following that. So today I wanted to provide a, a somewhat reflective um, assessment of the stages of psychosocial development as uh, identified by Eric Erickson. At the beginning of life we're provided with an emotional clean slate and each stage in life provides us with a dichotomy of emotional choices between positive development and negative development. So to provide some anecdotal evidence of Eric Erickson's uh, theory of psychosocial development, I'm going to outline how I feel my life has been affected by the various stages that I've been through. In particular, when I was in my late teens, I'd suffered a, a fairly severe abuse. But at, at that time, and the subsequent years after that, there were some pretty severe events that would uh, impact on how my, my later years would play out. I was a victim of sexual abuse as a, a late teenager. I was estranged from a lot of my family for no particular fault of my own. When I was 18 or 19, I uh, was studying photography, which was fully funded by family. But because of my estrangement, I was unable to continue photography studies and thus went on a path of um, menial jobs and uh, no direction and ultimately drug addiction. I resorted to drug addiction as a way of uh, self-medicating from the mental anxiety that I was retaining from the the after effects of the abuse. So with the disappointment of uh, losing my ability to become a photographer, I suffered a fairly severe deficit leading into the next stage of my life. For more than a decade following this period, this um, the, the afterglow of uh, these events lasted and to some extent still do affect me today. I think in one element, the uh, entrepreneurial spirit that I might have uh, had as a amateur and uh, early photographer in the late 90s, early 2000s were, were quashed by um, the, the disappointment of not having that uh, support. And ultimately one of my greatest aspirations has been to be self-employed and to not rely on the, uh, the, the patronage of an employer to be psychosocially re reduced by uh, abuse means that you come into adulthood with uh, less than your full faculties for giving yourself direction, giving yourself path and being confident in, in that path. And this is where I think my entrepreneurial spirit was uh, somewhat stifled. So I was uh, confronted by um, an inferiority of sorts. And as I positioned myself in, uh, uh, on a path only to have that dream quashed, it led me to adulthood without actually understanding where I was going. Following uh, the, the devastating blow of the, the previous couple of years, I became an adult, but I was also very isolated. I, um, I smoked a lot of marijuana and that persisted for a long time. I also isolated myself from the world, not socializing a whole lot. So for the first half of my 20s, I, I, I found myself quite isolated, um, writing a lot of music, no doubt, um, but not involving myself in large social groups. And the primary impact of this and the, the ultimate uh, consequence is that uh, I ended up growing to feel quite socially awkward. I am confident 
and this confidence stems from my my early teen years and my my, my mother's encouragement to to be a confident and educated person. But in large social groups, I became quite introverted and um, again, socially awkward. But that's not to say that I was never able to find love in, in my later years, I'm obviously married. But those years definitely made uh, finding love a lot more difficult. So having been unable to develop my identity in the previous stage and coming into my adult years in a, a state of severe isolation and reclusiveness, I uh, never developed very strong bonds that have lasted to this day, except for a handful of people, obviously. One thing that became quite evident is that over the years, the, the ultimate consequence of the, these adverse events in my life were that I developed a, a, a mentality of wanting to escape all the time. And this is a mentality that persists to this day. When I become stressed out and when I become anxious, which is relatively often, I uh, become interested in escaping and moving away and uh, experiencing new things. I'm always um, moving from fad to fad and I'm always looking for something new to do. And I'm not sure exactly whether this is something that I can remedy or not. And if Eric Erickson's uh, theory is anything to go by, well, there would be a suggestion that um, trying to repair the damage that was done is ne near on impossible. Now this is a, this is a course of events that um, occurred over two decades and I think that I'm starting to maybe work towards improving myself now but it's taken a long time in part helped by my, my creative exploits for, like, for instance uh, videography and music and my record label. But how do we resolve these things? So the conflict that exists is that for people who have experienced significant hits like myself or you know, significant events that have uh, had a drastic impact on those early stages in their lives, how do we help them resolve those issues and take leaps and bounds to better themselves and ultimately succeed? As a society, we often tell people that they're responsible for their own actions. But how can we possibly blame somebody for the events that had been thrust upon them in those earlier stages of their lives? Through blame and accountability, on one hand, people are not directly responsible for their actions because they're simply products of their past. But in society, we need to have people be accountable. So the conflict exists that we are expected to pick ourselves up when we're knocked down. But if everybody is subject to stages of psychosocial development and to not attain the positive outcome in one stage will leave one with a deficit in the next stage, then ultimately given a significant detrimental event in one's life will lead to a continuous downfall throughout the rest of their lives. But in society we're taught that we're accountable for our own actions. Worse yet, people are often blamed for not taking control of their own lives or not achieving success. It's uh, been said that the richer one gets, the, the greater sense of entitlement they feel. The idea that uh, somebody with a lot of money feels like they deserve it more than somebody that doesn't have a lot of money. But there's not a correlation between personal development, moral fiber and entrepreneurial spirit and uh, business acumen, these, these aren't um, mutually inclusive. And moreover, one subjective experience of their life can't be judged by another because the nuances of one's experience transitioning through these different stages of psychosocial development mean that there are stark differences between, say, a 37-year-old Ben and a 30-year-old somebody else that uh, hadn't experienced the things that I've been through. So if I could draw some conclusion from this, it's that those that who have taken the biggest hits and have experienced the, uh, the, the worst possible pains, while some will use that motivation and uh, succeed in spite of the, the, the difficulties in life, many and probably most will end up suffering. Myself included. And sadly, I don't think that 
it's anybody else's responsibility to pick those people up. I don't think society has a place for that. Nor do I believe that that, that support, that uh, being picked up by somebody else, really provides you with a catalyst for personal development in any serious way. I think that picking oneself up, confronting pain and confronting the conflict is what builds character, is what builds personal strength. For me, this has been a journey that's gone on for nearly 20 years, but I do think that I'll get through it one day. I, I do think that I'll succeed. I do think that I'll achieve the, the, the goals that I would like to achieve, but I, I've definitely experienced significant deficit, uh, significant um, handicap. So if there is a positive message to take from this, it's that uh, if you are suffering, know that you always have another opportunity to resolve past uh, conflicts and uh, ongoing pain. The, the choice is ultimately your own. It's a, a bit of pill to swallow, but ultimately your own happiness exists within you and nobody else. That's a terrible way to end. I think ultimately there's no profound wisdom or you know, philosophical tidbit that I can provide that, that's going to make things any easier. I think we're ultimately all responsible for our own happiness and uh, to hold on to that baggage from our past stages of psychosocial development is our own fault as much as we don't want to admit it uh, as much of a victim as we are and we are we, we have been victims it's our decisions in the here and now that will ultimately set us free